Christ died according to the Scriptures, was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. If Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, our preaching is empty. Your faith is empty. And we are found false witnesses, because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he didn't raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. If the dead do not rise, Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together Paul's triumphant exclamation, But now Christ is risen from the dead. We've read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and we're focusing on verses 20 to 28. Christianity is in vain if there is no resurrection. If Christ is not risen, then it's all based on a lie. Why would you live a life of suffering and service for righteousness when there's a much easier path and it doesn't matter in the end because we all die and that's it. We go back to creation. When God created Adam and Eve, the plan was for them to live for eternity in the garden, in the world that God created. There was in that garden two trees, a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the experience of life that we have was determined by which tree Adam and Eve ate of. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so that is the experience of our life. We experience good, but we also experience things that are bad. And indeed, those who seek righteousness, they hunger and thirst for righteousness, as Jesus said, they shall be satisfied. But in the present time, they so often suffer. The point that I'm making here, first of all, is that God's intention was for us to live in a physical universe like this world. But this world has now fallen into corruption. But we should not think that God has changed his ultimate purpose. He will renew the heavens and the earth, that there is a physical heaven and earth in which we will live in righteousness. And that is the promise that comes repeatedly in the scriptures. The kingdom of God promised to the Jews in the Old Testament and to all who believe in the Lord Jesus in the New Testament. And so, in Paul's explanation of these things, Christ has risen, but he is just the first to rise of those who have fallen asleep. The expression fallen asleep points to the fact that death is only temporary, that there is life after death, that there is a resurrection the body will rise 
just as we wake up in the morning and get up and get on with our life. Those who have fallen asleep in Christ will wake up in the morning and participate in the new heavens and new earth in the kingdom that he has prepared for those who love him. Death came by sin. Adam chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He could not know all the consequences of his choice, but he had the general idea that you will surely die if you eat of that tree. And he lived 930 years, a long time, but he died. Jesus came and lived as a man and died and rose again. And we're told that he is the first one then, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. We all die because we're all in Adam. Adam's life is a dying life. But those who believe in the Lord Jesus, those who are in Christ, all shall be made alive. Indeed, every person who has ever lived, from the baby that is aborted in the womb to the old soldier, all shall be made alive, the wicked and the righteous, but each one in his own order. Christ the firstfruits. Afterward, those who are Christ's at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Finally, there will be the judgment of the dead. Jesus specifically declared in John chapter 5 that there was a resurrection for the just and for the unjust, the unjust. Their judgment is described in Revelation chapter 20. So this is what he's talking about here. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So everybody will be brought out of death. Death will no longer have victory. Death will be destroyed. Now, remember Joseph? He was taken from the prison and exalted to be governor and ruler over all Egypt. A picture of Jesus being taken from death to rule the whole world. Of course, the one who appointed him was still over him. Pharaoh was still Pharaoh, but he had put all the administration into Joseph's hand. The father has appointed the son to administer the whole world. He has put all things under his feet. Of course, Jesus is still subject to the mind and will of God. Not forcefully, but because of his righteousness, because that is his choice to always do those things that please the Father. So, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. This is restoring the way things were meant to be with God over the whole world and everyone willingly submissive to his will and subject to his will. There is a great rebellion and Jesus is overcoming that rebellion and that rebellion involves death. So Jesus had to enter into death to defeat death. So death has no longer control. It is still there. It is still an enemy. And it is still a tool in Satan's hand to threaten people with death, to get them to do the wrong thing. But what Jesus has done is saying, I've defeated death. You don't have to worry about death anymore because I have risen from the dead. So you don't have to do the wrong thing for fear of death. You can do the right thing, and even if you die, you will rise again. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his order. First Christ, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming, and then death will be defeated. Now Christ is risen from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen 
asleep.